Like this dream sculpture, the human face is unique, an expression of beauty, identity, character and status. A person without a face may have no identity, but even after someone's death, we're able to recreate a face to reveal their living appearance. Facial reconstruction is a technique with a potent claim on our imagination, but also a powerful practical tool in many contexts such as police investigation and cultural memorialization and understanding of history. A few years ago, FaceLab collaborated with a number of people from the University of Glasgow and the Hunterian Museum, who were medieval historians, geneticists and armory experts, to reveal the face of King Robert I, or Robert the Bruce, a 14th century King of Scotland. Before this, portraits and busts of the victor of Bannockburn had to rely on the imagination of artists. And this greatest of leaders who re-established Scotland as an independent kingdom had remained faceless. This, along with other historical depictions like Richard III, St Nicholas and Ramesses II, have reshaped the way we think about people from the past, often revealing long-awaited pieces of history. Facial reconstruction becomes most culturally visible when applied to archaeological research. When we depict the face of someone from the past, we enable the viewer to see them as an individual rather than a museum artefact or an anatomical specimen. The facial image becomes a powerful and complex medium, fostering connections between the ancient world and personal lives. The facial image retrieves previously unknown or suppressed information that reshapes the way we think about history. This research is where art and science work hand in hand and FaceLab combines expertise from anthropology, art, anatomy, dentistry, animation, CGI, and computer science. The team has depicted faces of hundreds of people from the past, and our work is exhibited in more than 20 new exhibitions across four continents. Our public engagement and academic engagement has generated media interest in both British history and histories of people and cultures from across the world. In 2019, we were part of an international team that returned the remains of 11 South African farm workers to their communities in a repatriation project to address unethical scientific and medical practice from the past. The remains have been collected by academics from the University of Cape Town in the 1920s. Along with other scientific analysis, the facial depictions were integral to restoring dignity and rehumanising the remains. The Sutherland's Reburial Project set a precedent for repatriation and restitution initiatives and most importantly involved the direct descendants of the deceased who specifically requested to see the faces of their ancestors. Facial reconstruction may be the only viable option in forensic investigation when DNA and dental comparison are not possible. In 2020, FaceLab produced a facial reconstruction for Police Scotland for the remains of a man found in Denrothis in Fife, and this assisted in his identification and the resulting murder investigation. Our forensic casework is featured on UK Crime Watch and the Dutch Crime College and has been directly responsible for efficient identification, returning bodies to the grieving and giving a sense of closure to families. A relatively new and poignant application of our work has arisen through the global humanitarian crisis of migrant sea crossings. Over 20,000 migrants have died crossing the Mediterranean and few migrants who perish at sea are ever identified. In a British Academy funded project, FaceLab worked with academics from Spain and Italy to assess the identification of migrants who died crossing to the Canary Islands from West Africa. Through our networks in Senegal and the Canary Islands, we presented craniofacial identification as an alternative method for identification of migrants using social media images. Among our accolades, FaceLab have received the Educate North Research Group of the Year Award, the Selwyn Award from the Royal Photographic Society, and our 4D portrait of Robert Burns received a motion of thanks to the Scottish Parliament. 
We also were asked to attend the Great Festival in 2008 in Hong Kong, organised by the Department of International Trade to promote British technological innovation. In fact, the global interest in facial recognition has meant that we've trained over 50 international practitioners in FaceLab in Liverpool to enhance their capacity for this in their own countries.